traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound but not did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground but when he opened his eyes he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. 9. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. 10. In Damascus, there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called him in a vision. Ananias, yes, Lord, he said. The Lord told him to go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Uh, the word that God gave me for somebody is don't worry, he's putting you on straight street. <laughs> don't worry, he's putting you on straight street. Now, we all know this, this uh, Part of the Bible very well. It's been it's been it's been it's been used as a backdrop for many different uh, different uh, uh, people. Um, I don't know why God gave it to me, I, I, <laughs> except for somebody. He said to me, "Is is not understanding right now." See, let me let's get let's understand something. Saul. At the time, was traveling to, to Damascus. Now Saul was a man that was good at his job, and at this time, his job was killing Christians. <laughs> and I don't mean just killing them. I mean Saul was one of them go guys that took his job home with him. He did this thing relentlessly. He had a a, 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 he knew, people knew his name by what he did. He had a reputation that people heard his name and struck fear in their lives. Now, as he was on the road to Damascus, he was traveling with his, him and his boys. They out to chill and they going to do what they do. And they heard a sound. God struck him down off his off his horse or donkey or whatever he was riding at the time and, and he fell. But when he got up, he was blind. He couldn't see. Everything was dark. See, what you gotta understand is right now, you you were headed in a specific path. You were moving with no problem. You was doing what you do. But somebody out there, you got to know that God is about to knock you off your high horse. God is about to sit you down and change your whole outlook. God is about to do some things in your life that's going to throw you for a loop that you ain't never had done before. Because he's trying to put you on straight street. 
See, some of us walk around day by day thinking we don't know what we're doing, thinking we're doing this thing in ourselves, forgetting the idea that God is in full control. That God is the one that gave you that job. God is the one that gave you that ministry. God is the one that put you in that car. God is the one that wakes you up every morning. We forget that. So we get big-headed. We get to thinking, oh, I got it going on. Oh, I'm the one. But God is about to do something in your life that's going to sit you back on safe straight street. See, Saul was a grown man. <laughs> a man of, a, of influence. A man of power. He demanded respect everywhere he went. See, a lot of us walk around forgetting that or thinking that we we that big bad guy. We we the bad boy. You know, it's got to be one. I'm the baddest boy on the block. Oh, that's me. I'm the bad boy. On the block. But God is the baddest boy on the block. You don't even understand how bad God is. God will do something to you to straighten you right out. You know, the thing about God is that if he made you here, if he put you here with a purpose, he wants you to have that purpose. He wants you to achieve that purpose. If you decide in your own omnipotence to, 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 to think that you can go a different way, God will straighten it out. Mm, he'll straighten it out. See, it's time for you to get back on straight feet. See, when you was a young man, people had high hopes for you. People had that, say, this, this guy, this kid right here, he's going to be a good kid. He's going to be do big things. He's going to do wonderful things. Well, God said that's true. But somewhere along the lines, you win a crowd. Oh, man, you start following the girls. Or you got a little big head because you start playing basketball. Or somebody told you you could preach a little bit. Oh, my God, my God. See, God going to put you back on straight street. See, what you got to understand is that when, when, Saul was walk, when Saul was going to Damascus, he was going to do his business. But God had other plans for him. See, what you don't, what you gotta realize is that God will take away your sight. So you have to depend on somebody else. My God, my God. What I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say that God will take away all those things that you hold so dear and bring you down to a place that you got to depend on somebody else to even go to the back. My God, my God. Who am I talking to out there? Who am I talking to right now? Because somebody got to know that God got a plan for your life and you ain't in the right place for it. Oh, come on. Let me, get, let me get back to this. Let me get back to this. Okay. So Saul is struck down and blinded. And God came to him in a dream. In a, spoke to him in a dream. While he was sleeping, he spoke to him in a dream. Now, you got to understand the significance of what this passage is talking about. Because first of all, he took away his sight. So he had to depend on somebody else. The thing about it is he took it away for three days. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. See, when Saul's eyes got opened up again, he was going to be on straight street. People that know the Bible know that after Saul got his sight back, his whole outlook on life changed. Right now, you might be going through some trials, some tribulations. You don't even understand why. It's because God had got somebody ready to release a word in your soul that can get you back on straight street. You might not know how you went wrong. You might not even know that you went wrong. But God is trying to get you back to where you first found him. Oh my God. See, see, God is tired of you giving him them popcorn prayers. See, God is tired of you 
laying hands on somebody when you need to lay hands on yourself. God is tired of you prophesying to others and ignoring his word he's telling you. My God, my God, somebody got to know that God is trying to get you back on straight street. Listen, let me get back to this, this, this text. So, Saul is struck down. Um, he's blind. Now, understand something. God is so good. He, he's so good. He's so good. He's so good. The same time he was speaking to Saul in the dream, he was speaking to Ananias in the dream. Oh, God. See, when he, <laughs> see, I, it just blows my mind the way he orchestrates this thing. See, the same time he sent you out, he sent your blessing to meet you. My God, my God. The same time he sent you out, he sent your blessing to meet you. You just got to get there. See, you got to go straight and it's going to meet you right there. Oh, my God. See, Ananias was Saul's blessing. See, he gave him back his sight, but he gave him back more. Three days. Three days it took for Saul to change his mind. Three days it took Saul to change his heart. Three days it took Saul to change his destiny. My God, my God. Are you hearing what I'm saying right now? Three days. That's all. The word tells us that it happened suddenly. I shut that up, guy. Suddenly. Mm. He tried to put you on straight street. So you're wondering why your ministry is at a low, why they lifting it where it should, because he's trying to put you on straight street. Oh, no, you're not out there fornicating. You're not out there cursing. You're not out there drinking and running the streets. But whose tongue is flapping? Oh, my God. Who are you backbiting? Who are you speaking of curses against? Who are you hurting in the spirit realm so that you can't be set free? My God, my God, my God. Mm. He trying to put you on straight street. Okay. Let's finish this thing up. So, so Saul struck off his horse. Saul blinded for three days. Jesus comes to him, God comes to him in a dream and tells him, go this way and a man in Ananias is going to heal your eyes. It's going to give you back your vision. Yeah. You'll never see the same way again. My God, my God. You'll never see. When God do what he got to do in your life, you'll never see things the way you saw them before. You'll never see people the way you saw them before. You'll never hear things the way you heard them before. You'll be all new. God, the Bible tells us that you're a new creature. All things will pass away. That's even if you're saved, even if you're already a pastor or a preacher, you're, even if you're a deacon or a minister, your time is now. God wants to put you on straight street. My God, my God. Somebody out there listening to what I'm saying right now. God wants to reveal to you wonders of the world. God wants to give you more right now. God wants to give you heaven on earth, but he got to get you on straight street. Mm, my God, my God. What you got to know is that right now, you've been having issues in your marriage. Things, things is good, but they're not as good as they can be. They're not moving forward like you want them to move. And you don't understand why. You've been Doing what you think you're supposed to be doing. You've been working hard and you, you, you've got money and you're doing this and you're doing that. You're saving it. But it seems like the money just ain't going where you wanted to go. It ain't doing what you wanted to do. Because God is trying to let you understand something. That it's him first, not money. That if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, 
all these things shall be added unto you. My God, my God, my God. He's trying to put you on straight street. All right, let's wrap this up. See, what you don't know is that God has to bring you through a narrow place. So that when you get through that narrow place, when you get to the other side, he can open you up and you can bloom. You can, you can stretch out and go the way he wants you to go. You can become more than you ever thought you could be, but you got to stay straight street with God. He loves you so much. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. He loves you so much. He'll never see you cry and die. He'll never let a child of his go begging bread. Tonight, somebody has expectations in God. Somebody asked God for some things. Years ago, somebody is sitting in, a in, in, in his house going over a message and not understanding why it's not coming together. God said, change has to come. See, what you don't understand is those three days. That was a significant part of the whole story. Not the fact that Saul was blind. Not the fact that God came to him in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a vision in his sleep. Not the fact that he got struck down off a, off his horse and nobody heard him that was around. But the three days. God is saying to somebody right now, you got three days to get it right. In three days, your, your, your change is coming. In three days, your life will change. In three days, you'll be set free and delivered in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God, my God. He's trying to get you on straight street. You've been working for it. You've been pushing for it. You've been doing all you can do. In three days, he's coming for you. I need somebody to know out there right now that he's trying to get you on straight street. He's trying to get you on straight street. He's not allowing you to be hurt because of this. He's allowing you to be hurt so that you can become stronger. He's allowing you to see the pains and the pressures so, you'll, so that you can understand what you have to do. See, this thing costs something. It ain't free. People might tell you, God is free. Oh, no, he's not. It's going to cost you to get what you have, what he wants for you. He's trying to get you on straight street. Tonight, I just want to say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, to all those under the sound of my voice, God, touch them and wherever they may be hurting. Touch them and wherever they may be falling lack. Touch them and whatever you need change, Lord God, so that they may, their eyes may be opened, their destinies set free, and their lives will grow. In the name of Jesus. This night, he's putting your back on straight street. It might have been three days, three years, three hours. But he's coming to you now to get your back on straight street. You ran out with your own mind. He had to strike you down so you could see when your eyes opened up again. You're going to meet your destiny. You're going to meet your future. You're going to meet your deliverance. On straight street. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. He's coming for you on straight street. Get your affairs in order. Get your spirit prepared. Get your mind intact. Because he's coming on straight street. My God, my God, my God. He's coming for you on straight street. Father God, we thank you for this word that went forth. We hope it touched somebody's life. We hope it gave someone another chance, Lord God. We hope it opened up the thoughts in their minds, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that the dreams, their dreams are having, Lord God, let them understand that the dreams they're having are for a reason. To understand that God is speaking to them through their dreams. He's speaking to them through their subconscious. 
We walk by faith, not by sight. You don't need to see where you're going. Just got to go where you're going. God said he'll direct your path. He's putting you on straight street. <laughs> I just had to get that out there with somebody. I didn't want to be long. I didn't want to be out here because I know you got things to do. But take time out today. Sit down and talk to God. Hear what he has to say to you, what he has to impart in your spirit, so he can put you on straight street, and you can get all that he has in store for you. Again, I'm Calvin, this is AJ Ministries, um, and I want to thank you. And in all you're getting, get understanding.